Jada and Stitches Show and welcome to our 2024 calendar blanket. This year we're going to spend some time in Granny's magical cupboard. You know the one I'm talking about. All grandmothers are kind of magical, great grandmothers possibly even more so, and they all have that one cupboard. Maybe it's in the kitchen, maybe it's in the spare room, possibly the attic or the basement. But if they open it and you happen to catch a glimpse inside, it's everything. <laughs> It's all the things that have been lost and are now found. It's cleaning products sort of sitting next to broken teapots. It's stacks of old, cleaned up, recycled margarine tubs. <laughs> it's things your parents haven't even seen in 30 years. It's kind of like infinity. <laughs> and it's a little bit magical, especially when you're a kid. You're, oh, there's all kinds of neat things in there. And sometimes, sometimes if you're really lucky, there's like a tin of biscuits or candies or possibly chocolates. Anyway, that kind of nostalgia is what we wanted to channel this year. In fact, 2024 marks the 10th anniversary of the first ever Granny Square tutorial we did here on the channel. And since then, we've done more than 80 Granny Square tutorials, patterns, and projects on our channel, over on our website, and in our Etsy shop. If you've made a calendar blanket project along with us before, then you'll know that whatever the theme, we like to add a little bit of a twist, and this year is no exception. We have, in fact, three little twists that we'll be adding to the calendar blanket project. Twist number one is that in addition to the 12 unique Granny Square tutorials that we will be doing this year for the blanket, so one every month, and they're all unique grannies, we already have three Granny Square tutorials on our channel that you can use in addition to the 12 patterns we'll be learning this year. We will link them in the description box down below, and in the coming months we will do some crochet live streams in which we revisit these tutorials and make squares that will go along with the other squares in this year's blanket. Twist number two. This year's calendar blanket squares are not going to be 12 inches like we've done in previous calendar blanket projects. They are in fact going to be 8 inches or 20 centimeters. This will have an effect on the overall size of the blanket, more of that in a minute, but they use less yarn and are faster to make, which means that you'll have more time and more yarn to make other variations of these squares if you want to. And twist number three, coming soon. <laughs> you didn't think we'd give you all the surprises today, did you? <laughs> we do have one more fun little surprise in store for this year's calendar blanket, and we will reveal that in a little while. Let's talk sizes. Because we are making a smaller square this year, if you only want to make 12, so one for each of the 12 designs we do, that's fine. That will be a 3 by 4 assembled blanket, much like the ones we've done in the past, and it will end up being 24 inches by 32 inches. So this makes it a perfect baby blanket size or even a wall hanging, and that's without the border. If you make two of each square, you'll have 24 squares. You can put them together in a 4 by 6 style, and that will be 32 by 48 inches, so 32 across by 48 down, that makes it a really nice lap gan size. And that also is before the border. If you make three of each of this year's designs, you will have 36 squares, and you can put them together in a 6 by 6 square format. Now we're talking back of the couch, uh, throw size, you're looking at about 120 by 120 centimeters or basically 48 by 48 inches. Also a very nice size and it's square unlike a rectangle so that's kind of a little bit different if you wanted to go that way. And of course you can just keep getting bigger. If you make four that'll be 48 so you'll have four of each of those squares. You can put them together in a mm, six by eight format and now you're talking like a twin size bed sized blanket. So twin size, twin size mattress size blanket or twin size blanket. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> It'll be about 120 by 160 centimeters or 48 by 64 inches. And again, that's before the border. And our borders usually give about two inches to all four sides when it's done. But of course, you can always add more border if you want to. Now that the introduction of the entire blanket project is over, let's talk about the January square. We will begin this year's Granny's Magical Cupboard Calendar Blanket with the Stacked Shell Granny Square. So typically when you see a granny square, all of the shells sit in the spaces in between each other. Well, the difference with the stacked shell stitch is that the shells sit directly on top of each other. Like granny squares of all different kinds, the more you play with the yarn, the more interesting it gets. 
Now I love an eight inch square. It's so quick to make. By the time you're done, you're probably gonna wake, make, you're gonna wanna make another one. <laughs> playing with the colors. And I say this because this is what it looks like using two colors alternating each row, but I also made one using three colors. And remember I said I suggested you have about three colors for this year's project. That's because there is so much fun to be had by mixing up your colors. I will be using shades of yellow and shades of blue and white. In this square, it's the exact same size, it's the exact same pattern, but I did two rows of white and then two rows of blue and then two rows of yellow as opposed to alternating each row. I'm going to talk about how easy it is to change color in today's project and I'm also going to demonstrate that too. Of course, if you wanted, you could make the whole thing in a single color as well. So the color options are pretty much endless, in, <laughs> depending on how you want to change them, the frequency that you want to change them, and maybe what colors you want to use. You could, if you wanted to, use a different color for each row, and that is a six row granny square, so that would be six colors in one square. All right, I believe I've said what I need to, so let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a stacked shell granny square together. In order to make our stacked shell granny squares, we're going to want 40 yards for the entire square. So this is a six row granny. It needs 40 yards of a size four medium weight yarn. I'm using acrylic. That's 20 yards per color if you do two colors, around 12 to 15 yards per color if you do three. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. The hook we're using is a five and a half millimeter, also known as an I or a nine. Four stitch markers. You might find these handy to mark out your corners. And to check your gauge, you'll want a measuring tape. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Granny squares are worked from the center out. So whatever color is going to be in the center of your granny, grab that, make a slip knot, and chain five to begin. Once you have five, take your hook, slip it through the first chain, slip stitch to join, and that gives you a little ring that fits over your finger. Now I'm going to work over top of my little short tail, but you can leave it out to the back and weave it in later if you find that easier. Each row begins with a chain three. Those three chains count as a double crochet and they will always count as a double crochet in this pattern. So each row begins with three chains, bunk, 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 that counts as a double crochet. Into your ring, you're gonna work two more double crochets And that is your first shell complete. Three double crochets equals one shell. Chain two. Into your ring, you're going to work three more double crochets. Three double crochets worked into the same space or stitch equals one shell. This is the stacked shell granny square pattern. So you are going to be on the lookout for these little clusters of three double crochets, all sitting in a bit of a fan shape. That's a shell. Chain two for a corner, and you are going to work three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain two, into this ring, and that will be row one. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, chain two. Three double crochet, chain two, and one more. Three double crochet, chain two. That last chain two is your last corner. You're gonna find that chain three that began the row, remember this one counts as a double crochet, and you're gonna slip stitch into the top of it to join the row. Now I like to just take my hook, set it aside. If you're new to crochet and you're still getting comfortable identifying the corners of your granny squares, at the end of every row it's nice to put your little granny square down, find those chain two corner spaces, pull out on them and that will really help make that granny square shape stand out for you. The other thing you might want to do is mark your corners. This is why the stitch markers are handy for this project. You can mark out your four corners. The corners will look a little different, they'll change a little bit with every single row, not a lot, 
but it does help to keep you on track to always know where your four corners are. So if you're new and you want to really zip along and you don't want to lose track of where you are, I recommend marking out those four chain two corner spaces with stitch markers before we continue. If you want to change colors for each row like I've done here, once you've finished a row by joining with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three, like I did here, you will just snip your yarn, fasten off, grab your next color, in this case I was using blue, and you will join your yarn with a slip stitch in this middle stitch right here. So this is the first shell from the previous row. You've joined in the top of the chain three. If you want to change colors, fasten off, rejoin your new yarn with a slip stitch in the middle of this shell. So look for that middle stitch. That's where you want to start the row. If you're not changing colors, and I won't be changing colors this row, but I will demonstrate changing colors after this second row, we are just going to finish the row with the slip stitch in the top of the chain three and then slip stitch into the top of that next stitch, which is the middle double crochet of that shell. So here's your chain three, here's double crochet number three, that's the middle stitch. So make sure we're all in the top of that middle stitch. This is the stacked shell stitch, granny after all. Here we go, row two. We begin with a chain three, chain three counts as a double crochet. Into that same stitch, you're gonna work two more double crochet. And that is the first shell of row two. And you'll see that it's sitting directly on top of the shell from the previous row. Chain one. I'm gonna remove my little stitch marker. I am now working into the corner. Into this corner space, we're gonna work double crochet, chain two, double crochet. double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Chain one, if you want, put that marker back in your chain two corner so that you know that's the corner. And now you look for the middle stitch of the next shell. Three double crochet into that middle stitch. Three double crochet into that middle stitch. We've stacked a shell on top of the one from the previous row. Chain one, and now we're working into our next chain two corner. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and chain one before you leave. So we've got little chain one spaces in between our shells and the little double crochet, chain two, double crochets that we work into the corner. Put your stitch marker back in your corner and you can see how things are looking a little different now. So the shells are stacked on top of each other, but now we're creating corners. Make sure after you work your last double crochet in the corner, so double crochet, chain two, double crochet, you chain one before you move on to the next shell to work three double crochet into the middle of that shell. So find the middle stitch and work three double crochet into it. And chain one. That little chain one is giving us a little bit of a breather room before we get to the corner. Corner is double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and chain one. Don't forget that little chain one because that just sets you up for the next side. Put your marker back in your chain two corner and continue. Three double crochet into the middle stitch, chain one. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one in the corner space. And that will bring us back to the beginning. That's three double crochet in the middle of that shell from the previous row, chain one. And then double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the corner space, chain one. Don't forget that chain one. That brings you all the way back to the beginning and you're gonna find the top of the chain three that you began with and slip stitch to join. 
and you've got something that looks like this. This is why I say you want to mark out those four corners because you can see how that might get a little confusing if you don't really know what you're looking for because you've got all these extra little spaces towards the corner. So mark your chain two spaces, maybe lay it down, pull out those corners so that you can really get comfortable with that square shape. Now, if you're changing colors, and I'm going to change colors after this row, so every two rows I'll be changing colors, you're just going to snip your yarn and fasten off, and I'll show you that in a second. If you're not changing colors, just slip stitch into the middle stitch, so that next stitch, slip stitch into it and wait. But this is how you would change color for every row if you wanted to change color, or any row for that matter. Just snip your yarn, fasten off, if you want, you can also carry the yarn up the back. It's a little more of a sort of a, a, a it's not as neat and tidy because you can see a little bit of that yarn kind of getting carried up the back, but it's, it's not a deal breaker. Um, but this saves you from having to snip your yarn every time you change colors. And that's kind of nice if you're going to be alternating colors every other row like I did here. So you would just join the row and then slip stitch into the next stitch with the row's previous color. So you can just carry your yarn up if you want to alternate every row, or if you don't like that little bit of sort of extra carried color, you can just snip your yarn, fasten off, and join at in the new stitch, sort of in the middle stitch, with your new color. So you've got a couple options there. I'm going to just weave this in through a couple of stitches, work over top of it when I get to the corner, and I'll be weaving in most of my short tails when I'm done. For those of us changing colors, make a slip knot, put it on your hook, and very simply you're just going to find that middle shell. If you're not changing colors, you're sitting right here in the middle of this middle stitch just waiting. The rest of us join your yarn with a slip stitch in that middle stitch, and all of us can now chain three. So every row begins with a chain three, and the chain three counts as a double crochet into that same stitch, three more double crochet, I'm sorry, two more double crochet, you want three total. So chain three, two double crochet into the middle stitch. Chain one. You've got your corners marked, I'm going to get my little tail out of the way there. Before you get to the corner though, you've got that standalone double crochet stitch into the top of that standalone double crochet stitch, right before the corner, you're going to work three double crochet. So right into that stitch, three double crochet. So it looks like that. You joined here, chain three, two double crochet in the same place, so a stacked shell, chain one, and now into that Standalone double crochet from the previous row's corner, you're working three double crochet. So you can see that? Because we're going to start a new stacked shell over here. Let's get that little slip or stitch marker out of the way. We want to create a corner. We are going to chain two. So we're not actually working anything into the corner on this row, but we are creating a corner by chaining two. And now we're going to work across this side. So the first thing we do after the corner is find that next standalone double crochet. It's very easy to see. Find the top of it and work three double crochet into it. Before you do anything else, chain one. So you like to have little spacers in between. So there's our chain two corner. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in there so I can see it. Three double crochet, chain one, in the top of that standalone double crochet. Now we have our shell, we want to put a stacked shell in the middle of it. So three double crochet, chain one, in the top of that middle stitch. So you're always going for that middle stitch. Three double crochet, chain one. And now we have another stacked shell on top of the previous two rows shells. Don't forget that chain one after your three double crochet, and we're back to a little corner. I'm going to take my shell or my little stitch marker out of the chain two corner. I have my fingers in it. You can see that standalone double crochet. 
into the top of that stitch I'm going to work three double crochet. Chain two to create the new corner and now I can turn it and work on the next side. So I'm skipping the chain two space altogether. I'm looking for that next standalone double crochet. I'm going to work three double crochet into the top of it. And chain one before I think of anything else. And I'm going to put my stitch marker back in that corner. All right, what are we doing? Every side of row three should look like this. Three double crochet in the top of the standalone stitch, chain one. Three double crochet in the top of the middle stitch on this shell, chain one. Three double crochet in the top of the other standalone stitch, so you've got standalone, shell, standalone. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet. That brings you to a corner, you're chaining two, you're skipping the corner space completely, turn and repeat. Three double crochet, chain one, in the standalone stitch, three double crochet, chain one in the middle stitch of the shell, three double crochet, chain two in the last standalone stitch because that chain two gives you your next corner so that you can start again. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain two, and that brings us back to where we started. And I will catch up with you there. After you work the last two chains, which is your last corner, make sure you've marked it with your stitch marker. Don't forget, you've got one more standalone stitch here, three double crochet, chain one, and then you can join with a slip stitch to the top of that first chain three that we made. So let's just recap. Every row, I should say every side for row three, should have three full shells with a chain one in between across. So shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell. You've got four chain two corner spaces and they are created by working shell, chain two, when you get to that last standalone stitch. So shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain two. Shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain two, and so on. So when you get all the way back around, don't forget that last shell, chain one, and you can join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And there we are at the end of row three. Row three has three shells per side, two chain one spaces per side, and four of your chain two corner spaces. So make sure that that's what you've got. You can change colors if you want. If you're not changing colors, slip stitch into that middle stitch. If you are changing colors, join your new color with a slip stitch in that middle stitch. We all chain three. We all finish the first shell with two more double crochet in that same place. Now where you see a shell, work three double crochet into the middle stitch and chain one. So shell, chain one. This is the stacked shell stitch. So here's a full shell. We're going to find the middle stitch and work three double crochet into it. Three double crochet. And chain one. Ooh, Jada, what are we doing? Well, every row gets a little bit bigger, but this pattern kind of gives you time to breathe before you do a big expansion. So in the previous row, we had three shells per side. But in this row, row four, we're gonna have three full shells, but now we wanna create these little double crochet, chain two, double crochet corners again. So I'm gonna take my stitch marker out of my corner. We are working into the corner this time. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. So I'm going to put my stitch marker back in my chain two corner. Started with a chain three, two double crochet in the same stitch. It's a stacked shell, chain one. Next shell, three double crochet in the middle stitch, chain one. And now into that corner, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. Put your stitch marker back in. It's very easy now. You're looking for full shells. You're looking for the middle stitch. 
into each middle stitch you're working three double crochet, chain one. That doesn't change. Three double crochet, chain one, middle stitch, three double crochet, chain one, next shell, middle stitch, three double crochet, chain one. Why the chain one? Because now in these chain two corners we are working double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and chain one. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. Put your stitch marker back in the chain two space and every side should look like this. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. That's what gets worked into the corner space. You've got three shells. In the middle stitch of each, you're gonna work three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. That brings you to a big corner space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. Start again. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, into the corner space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. And you're going to repeat that all the way around. I'll catch up with you back at the beginning and I'll recap row four. As you're nearing the end of row four, you're going to work your last double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one, into the corner space. Mark your, your new corner there. You've got one shell left, so you work three double crochet, and chain one into that middle stitch, so three double crochet, chain one, and join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So, chain three always counts as a double crochet. Across each side, your row four should look like double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one, worked into your corner spaces. Keep marking those chain two corners with your stitch markers so it's easy to see. Double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Chain one, Shell, chain one, or three double crochet, chain one. Three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. Each of those shells is anchored in the center stitch of each shell from the row before and will be throughout this pattern. This is the stacked shell stitch. Don't forget your last chain one before you go double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one in that corner space. Mark your corners and continue. And that's where we're at. You can take a moment if you want. Grab your four corners, pull it out. Oh, look at that pattern. I just love the math of this. It is so pretty. I will be changing colors again. If you're not changing colors, slip stitch into the middle stitch of this shell that we're in. If you are changing colors, you've just joined in the top of that chain three. Snip your yarn, fasten off, and grab your next color and we're going to work our last two rows of our square together. If you're changing colors, you're going to start with a slip knot on your hook. I am changing to a nice sunny yellow now. We are going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the top of that middle stitch. It's the same place you're sitting. If you are not changing colors, you just slip stitched, that, slip stitched into that middle stitch. So we're all sitting in the same place. Now we're going to chain three. Everybody chains three. Chain three counts as so double crochet. Complete that shell with two more double crochet stitches worked into the same stitch. So make sure that shell is stacked directly on top of the shell from the previous row. Chain one. You've got a shell and then a standalone stitch. And I'm sure you'll remember what we do in the middle of the shell, look for the middle stitch. Three double crochet. chain one, find the standalone stitch just before your corner. So remember it's nice and helpful to keep those chain two corners marked so you can see things like that standalone stitch from the previous row. We are going to work a shell into it. So three double crochets all into the top. I've got this little tail here I'm going to work over top of. I'm going to get my hook or my 
yarn stitch marker out of the way, top of that stitch, three double crochets into it. So there's double crochet number one in that standalone stitch. And double crochets two and three. Now, if you'll recall, when we worked a shell into a standalone stitch from a row before, so this was the row not the previous one, but the one just before that, we chain two for the new corner and skip the corner altogether because we are focused on these standalone stitches. So into that standalone double crochet, you're gonna work three double crochet stitches. It's a new shell. And chain one. Chain one before you do anything else. Put your stitch marker back in place. And it's that fun, kind of slightly, every other row we just do shells. And the rows in between, we get a double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one corner. So we have a big corner on a shell row. We have a little corner on a row in between, but those corner spaces are still just two chains. Mark them with your stitch marker, it really helps. Now you're gonna work shell or three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, into each of those shells all the way across your side. So three double crochet, chain one, and it's always in that middle stitch. You're stacking your shells. Three double crochet, chain one, and three double crochet, chain one. When you've run out of shells and you're coming up on your stitch marker, that's your signal to look for that standalone stitch. So if you're on a row that's only shells, you'll be working a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the corner. But if you're on a row that's shells with that little corner from the previous row and you have a standalone stitch, you wanna work a whole new shell into it. So find that standalone stitch, work three double crochets into it. And this is that unique row where you finish that last shell, it's in the standalone stitch, chain two, Skip the previous chain two corner completely, and now you're looking for the standalone stitch on the next side. Three double crochet, chain one. So we are adding shells. Three double crochet, chain one. Before you do anything, get that stitch marker back into your corner, and this is what you're doing all the way around. This is just a row of shells. So into the first standalone stitch of the side, you work three double crochet, chain one. Three double crochet, chain one into the middle stitch of each of those complete shells. And when you get to the end, you've got a standalone stitch, you work three double crochet, chain one. So shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way across. You work three double crochet into that standalone stitch, chain two for your new corner, put your stitch marker back in so you remember, and then you start again. You've got a standalone stitch, so it's shell, chain one three double crochet, chain one. Three double crochet, chain one in each of those middle stitches. And then you're at a standalone stitch, shell, three double crochet, chain two. So that stitch marker is your indicator. There's a chain two corner space. You've got to make sure you replace it with a new chain two corner space. Shell in the standalone stitch, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one. Shell in the last standalone stitch, chain two, there's your chain two corner. Your little stitch marker reminds you. And we finish the row with shell in that standalone stitch, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, and then we're back at the beginning. I'll let you finish that up and I'll catch up with you at the beginning. As you near the end, you work your last chain two space. Remember your shell chain one is in that freestanding stitch shell chain one in the last freestanding shell or the last shell available. Don't forget that chain one before you join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. You should still have all four of your stitch markers employed. Maybe lay it down, 
pull out those lovely big chain two spaces. Each side should have five complete shells across it with chain one spaces in between. Shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one. Your corners are shell, chain two, shell, but not built into the space, you're building them into those freestanding double crochet stitches. Why? Because we want to set up each row for more stacked shells. We're stacking our shells, they're all in alignment, each shell is worked into the middle stitch. So that standalone stitch right here, it is just the baby or the beginning, the seed of a new shell. It would become the middle stitch of the shell. And that is row five. All right. Let's go on to row six. This is the final row. If you're changing colors, you can fasten off, join your new color with a slip stitch in the middle stitch of this shell. For those of us not changing colors, we're just gonna slip stitch into it. We wanna start in that middle stitch, chain three. Everybody chains three. That counts as a double crochet. Two more double crochet into that same stitch and chain one. Shell, chain one, shell, chain one. So three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one. You're working a complete shell into the middle of each of those shells as we work away across to the first corner. So this is the row where we want to go back to creating what I wanna call seeds for shells. So chain one after your last shell, we're to that corner, that stitch marker really helps remind us, and into the corner space now we're gonna work double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and chain one before you think of anything else, and put that stitch marker back in your chain two corner. So we're back to creating double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one, into the actual space. All the way across, you've got five shells. So that means five times you're gonna go three double crochet, chain one, 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 three double crochet, chain one. Your stitch marker indicates you've arrived at your chain two space and into the corner, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. So work away at your three double crochet, chain ones. I'll catch up with you at the next corner just to remind you, and then I'll turn you loose. In the middle stitch of the last shell of each side, work three double crochet, chain one. Your stitch marker is marking your chain two corner and that gives you the reminder that you are working a new corner. So into the space, double crochet, chain two, that's your new corner, double crochet, and before you do anything else, chain one. So double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. Stitch marker goes back in the corner, and then it's the shells again. Three double crochet, chain one in the middle of each shell, three double crochet, chain one in the last shell, and then into the corner space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. You're on the home stretch, my dears. That is the last row of this square. So just work away at that, and I'll catch up with you back at the beginning. Once you get back to the beginning, your last corner, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one in the space, three double crochet, chain one, three double crochet, chain one, that brings you back to your chain three that began the row, slip stitch to join and fasten off. Now, this square can be made infinitely large. You would just be repeating rows five and six, five and six, five and six. So that's a little pattern because every other row, you have a shell, chain two, skip the, the corner space and then shell to begin again. And the corners in between, when you finish off a stacked shell and you've come up to the big space, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain one. So it's alternating between just shells and a chain two corner where you skip and actually creating a new corner space. So you can repeat rows five and six if you want to make these even larger. So this square does infinitely get bigger. It always continues to look nice, but we are only making six row squares. This will be eight inches in diameter or 20 centimeters across. You can take out your stitch markers. And I like to now take a moment to just 
grab those corners and pull them down so that I can really see that square. I keep my hand on the rest of the square just to kind of help with the heat of my hand, give it a little bit of a light blocking. So this is an unofficial blocking, so to speak. You can take a moment to weave in your tails if you want, um, if you've got several of them. I know weaving in tails is kind of annoying, which is why I like to sort of try and work over top of them um, as I'm crocheting, but sometimes it can't be helped. So if you are making a bigger project, or even if you're just making stacks of granny squares that you just want to kind of use up your scraps with and then put them aside for later projects, it's always a good idea to weave in your little tails as you finish each square so that you don't actually have to do them again down the road because weaving in a billion tails when all you want to do is be finished a project stinks. <laughs> so weave them in as you go. It's much nicer to your future self. And there we go. That is the stacked shell granny square. There are two very different ways you can make it look just by alternating your colors one per row, so every other row. If you wanted to make every single row a different color, you'd get a very different look again. This is a nice sort of color block way of doing it. You can really see those individual spaces kind of showing off. This makes it look a little more lacy, a little rounder. This one definitely squares it up. And you can also do it in a solid color, and that is also really pretty. And a whole bunch of these in just solid colors would be lovely too. But there's two different ways to make that stacked granny shell stitch square look. I really love this. I love this particular pattern and I think it looks so different depending on how you use your colors. That's another thing I love about granny squares. And this one's so pretty. I really like it. I think you've got a lot of different project options going forward that you could use a square pattern like this for. So I'll be curious to know what you guys think of it. Let's talk blocking briefly. We have some links to blocking tutorials we've done down below if you want to block your squares. Um, I will not be blocking my squares until I have the whole blanket assembled and then I might do some blocking after that if I feel it needs it. Typically, and you saw me kind of blocking out the corners of the square in the tutorial, you don't really need to block granny squares, but if your tension is really, really tight or you've got you know a stack of them made, maybe you're a couple months in and you notice that some of them are a little smaller, or a little bigger than others and it kind of drives you crazy or you want to be able to see them all laid out and you don't want them to all kind of look like they're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> then you can go ahead and block them. Um, and it's really not that big a deal. You can just get them kind of damp, put them on a towel, sort of pin them into place and let them dry. And it'll also square them up. So if you do have trouble seeing your corners for whatever reason, um, that can help too. We hope you enjoyed making the first granny square in our Granny's Magical Cupboard calendar blanket along with us this week. And we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a cozy weekend. <laughs> Bye guys. Hi everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.